गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास आई होप यू आर ऑल एबल टू हियर मी थिंक माई वीडियो इज इंट वर्किंग बट आई एम एबल टू हियर माई सेल्फ गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास आई होप यू आर ऑल एबल टू हियर मी यस आई आई एम एबल टू हियर माई सेल्फ uh i am unable to view myself there is some video problem let me just fix this in a moment and then i shall begin with the class so today we are going to start with november current affairs uh, sorry december current affairs so i've already done a couple of months with you guys as you guys might be aware but uh, i'm yet <coughs> yet to do december so this is a new month i'm starting from today itself i have finished october and november and so now i'm going to go ahead december couple of classes for december couple of classes for jan and then feb i'll also uh, do the previous months jo purane left out ho gaye hai jaise august september ye sab mahine bhi main karwaunga so don't worry about that taki holistic aapki learning ho right at this point i'm just trying to fix the video so guys please don't worry will take 2 to 3 minutes this uh, problem Okay I think now now my video has been restored uh so fair enough in in that case Yes it is working my video great so it has been restored no it, it has gone again so these are some details of the program that we are running through right now uh we at grade up we have launched new batches so we are uh, allowing you a 40% off right now a flat 40% off all you need to do is use this code bba40 to so bba40 uh ka code daliye aapko flat 40% off milega this is the new thing and you you must uh, use this as soon as possible
right i think uh, it is working well now so i think on that note we can begin with the class right right so this is the code as i was saying sahi uh, prep ka prime time this is the best time to prepare and uh, you can speak to a counselor the board number is mentioned at the bottom 9650052904 feel please feel free to call us there right so <clears throat> this slide this presentation will take about 75 odd minutes maybe till around 12 so let's start straight away now it's a proper class so you have to be patient you have to be here till the end right so let's start with it uh now the first important piece of information for this month is what has happened in the city of bhubaneswar bhubaneswar you know is the capital of odisha state in eastern india uh it's become the first indian city to get an iso certification iso ke alag alag levels hote hai to inko jo mila hai wo latest hai pehle aur iso the 2010 tak ka tha but 2015 sabse advanced hai isko hum kehte hain 9001 2015 so this is uh, iso stands for international organization for standardization it's a french term uh, which is why it is not an exact conversion but yes it uh, you know means the same ultimately right <clears throat> so iso is for environmental safety standards so for sustainability and this particular one they have received for fecal sludge and septic management services fecal matlab jo uh, jo waste jo nikalta hai ghar se gharon se but mainly solid waste theek hai and septic management also relates to industrial waste well fecal management is primarily household waste septic management also includes industrial waste so the combination and mostly solid waste solid waste solid and semi liquid which goes via the drains and that clogs the drains uh, not a very um, shall we say um, interesting topic to start the day with but what to do that is uh, an important thing <coughs> because an indian city has got such a uh, prestigious uh, tag so that's why we had to mention that meanwhile uh, the union minister shri prakash javadekar he's actually the minister of climate change he has law, uh, of the environment forestry and climate change so he has launched the india climate change knowledge portal the idea is that this will now uh, lead to several new possibilities uh, occurring right um, meanwhile the state of nagaland <coughs> just to give you a brief history of this occasion so nagaland has around 16 naga tribes there are some naga tribes in neighboring states as well like manipur uh, arunachal pradesh mizoram assam and also in the country of myanmar manipur especially has quite a few but uh, interestingly here the state of nagaland itself has 16 naga tribes so uh, of course they are all naga but they've had their differences their separations earlier uh, so there was one word there is one bird the hornbill bird main aap sabhi ko request karunga aap log please google images pe dekh lijiye what exactly is the hornbill हॉर्नबिल के तीन चार अलग वराइटीज है शायद ज्यादा बट सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिया में है द ग्रेट इंडियन हॉर्नबिल दैट्स द बिगेस्ट वन इट हैज अ लॉन्ग बीक ऑन टॉप अ वेरी सॉलिड बीक इट्स ऑफ एन ब्लू कलर्ड uh has multiple colors so that is one bird which every naga tribe revered so that became a symbol of united naga pride which is why uh, for last several years more than a decade the uh, hornbill festival has brought together all the naga tribes uh, together the difference this year for the obvious reasons is that this is completely virtual because obviously they did not want to have large gatherings right uh, continuing with it now moving on to the united arab emirates now i think i mentioned this the uae is often a country which is at the center of a lot of new developments uh, in the gulf region they are often the uh, mm, Uh, right it is often the the country that gets the maximum um, shall we say an innovator in this region and so one more thing they have now set up is it's become the first gulf arab uh, arab gulf country to generate electricity from coal if one might say what what is the big deal in that obviously it's a, it's something which we do all the time but it's interesting because uh, the middle eastern region has not needed much of coal they've so much of crude oil they've used most of it they don't practically need it but they wanted to experiment on something new 
because they do have some reserves. So why not use that as well? Right. Although now they're not very happy. The country says as per latest update, they might discontinue this thing. So this is known as the Hassan power plant, which is in Dubai. Dubai is one of the seven Emirates of the United Arab Emirates. I'm also sharing with you the name of the company which is developing the plant. That is the Aqua Power, which is from Saudi Arabia, while coal is being supplied uh, by Jera Company, which is from Japan. So there is some coal in UAE. Also, some coal is coming from abroad. But overall, this mining contract has gone to this Japanese company. So the mining contract with Jera Company from Japan and the overall uh, development of the same is going to Aqua Power, which is from Saudi. Azerbaijan, meanwhile, this has been one of the most uh, important topics over the last couple of months, last year or so, has been, uh, I can see a couple of students have joined. Do feel free to comment if there are any questions. So Azerbaijan and Armenia, they obviously had a ferocious uh, war last year. Mm, and uh, that finally we are seeing signs of progress. So Azerba uh, Armenia has surrendered. Uh, Russia has brokered the deal between the two countries and Azerbaijan has officially reclaimed the Nagorno-Karabakh region. They always claimed this since uh, the USSR broke up, <coughs> but for the last 25 odd years, it wasn't officially done. Now it has been done. Right, so there's a new appointment at the IMFC, uh, which I want to talk about. What is the IMFC? First of all, we must understand. Uh, so there is this lady, she's from Sweden. Her name is Magdalena Anderson. So I will give a hint about how you can see the name of uh, You can take out hints. So uh, I'm turning on the highlighter. So can you see the double S everyone? So I'm a huge football fan, although I don't know if I'll remain a football fan after the latest ESL thing. But yes, I've been a football fan for more than two decades. And that has given me deep insights, in, insights into um into european names so from class 7 8 i was able to identify europeans by the name spelling which country they are from so if you see the double s double s ka matlab hai scandinavian agar double s ki jagah single s hota uh, to fir this would have been an english name from the united kingdom british theek hai but the moment you have a double s that means it is a scandinavian name so from sweden or denmark or norway or iceland uh, <coughs> sorry, so she's become the first woman to be appointed to this uh, post at the IMFC. Now, what is IMFC? It is a policy advisory committee, uh, part of the board of governors of the IMF, International Monetary Fund. I'm sure you've all heard of the IMF. So this is, again, part of the International Monetary Fund. Right, she was earlier the Minister of Finance in Sweden. Obviously, Minister of Finance gives you a great idea of finance and uh, economy. So that has definitely given her a push for this post. Okay, so uh, continuing with, you know the format by now. Whenever it's a standalone topic, I will standalone topic headline. And whenever there is miscellaneous, I will show this to you. Right? Okay, so let's continue. Um, so there is this uh, professor, Eric Zing. He has become the president of the uh, of an Abu Dhabi based uh, university, which is the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence.
some problem with the ink, I think. So I'll just uh, rectify that. Give me two minutes for this. Right. Uh, you guys have seen already quite a bit. Okay. So, Dr. Eric, uh, Professor Dr. Eric Zing, he's actually the, uh, he's from the USA. Uh, so, he's an AI expert. You know what is AI, artificial intelligence. So, he has become president of a university, which is based in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, another innovation by the UAE. So, it's called the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence, MBZ UAI, uh, the first uh, graduate level research based AI university in the world. Uh, he has succeeded Dr. Michael Brady, who was the interim chief. Meanwhile, in the state of Uttarakhand, a pollinator park has been set up. What is pollination? I think everybody knows the process of bees in particular. There are some other creatures as well, but especially bees, they pollinate flowers and fruits. Basically, the reason we have fruits and flowers is because of uh, bees. So, this is the first pollinator park in India. Mein. To, pollination is a million-year-old thing, but a park specifically dedicated for this purpose because bees are getting threatened. You know, their uh, habitat is getting threatened. I was lucky to have uh, a madhumakhi ka chatta at my home for several years but now they have disappeared um, so yes lovely creatures they are and they are not as dangerous as the general uh, view is as long as you don't trouble them they don't trouble you right so there is this pollinator park which is in Haldwani Uttarakhand Haldwani is a very important business hub because uh, Haldwani is where it's on the foothills so it connects uh, the foothills uh, with the plains with the mountains. Immediately after Haldwani, Nainital starts. Haldwani and uh, Kartgodam. Kartgodam is the last station. Haldwani is the last town. So that is a very important business hub. So no wonder they've started it here. Because there are business purposes of this, of course. So who inaugurated this? It was a Czech national. He's from the Czech Republic, which is now called Czechia. His name is Mr. Peter Smith. Uh, Smetacek. Uh, he belongs to the Buffalo uh, Butterfly Research in Center, which is located in Bhimtal. Bhimtal also in Uttarakhand. Um, there's, there's an area of four, a couple of great lakes. That area is known as Nenital. We all know there's also Nokuchiatal. Nenital because the uh, lake looks like a neni, like an eye. Nokuchiatal because it has nine corners. Satal because it has, uh, it is a combination of seven small short lakes which combined into one and uh, Bhimtal is because as per uh, as per legend, as per mythology, as per local lore, um, Bhim from the Mahabharat, who was one of the Pandavas, he fell down on that place, you know, and because Bhim was the world's strongest man. So he was a baby. He fell there. And so that created a crater there, which later filled uh, after rains, it filled with water. So interesting uh, story about that. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Chaturvedi, Sri Chan Sanjeev Chaturvedi, he's the chief conservator of forest of the research division in this area. Moving on to Scotland, which is part of the United Kingdom, there are hundreds of homes which are set to use green hydrogen. That is to, will be used to heat their properties and cook their meals as part of a new trial that could help Households replace fossil fuel gas. So United Kingdom doing a lot for the climate change, for fighting climate change. Uh, when Boris Johnson first became the prime minister, there was some consternation. There were fears that he might be uh, might be another Donald Trump. That was a fear when it came to climate change. But he has turned out to be extremely different uh, in terms of climate change for sure. Also in terms of the vaccine reaction, is a uh, government has been extremely efficient the last couple of months. Right, so I've already told you our board number. You can call us up there to speak to the councillors. But we also have, we are also present on WhatsApp because we understand you guys might be quite comfortable on WhatsApp. So we are there, 935 443
Okay, let's uh, look at uh, further December current affairs. Okay, according to the air pollution data released by the US Air Quality Index, Lahore in Pakistan has topped the list of the world's most polluted cities. It is not good for us at all because Lahore isn't that far from where we stay. It is uh, the other side of Amritsar in Indian Punjab. So uh, basically whole, most of North India and most of Pakistan suffers a lot from air pollution. There are several reasons for it. Uh, but one thing which affects this region, this is landlocked. It is not close to the ocean. Now Mumbai has a lot of pollution. Kolkata, Chennai, they all have. But they are slightly luckier in the sense Chennai and Mumbai directly on the coast. Kolkata about 100 kilometers away. So in these cities, a lot of the polluted air does get absorbed by the ocean there is the ocean breeze which flows into it but that is not the case with say Lahore which is in inland Pakistan in Punjab or Delhi Delhi doesn't do that well in fact Delhi is second on the list and Kathmandu is third which is really tragic Kathmandu is on the hills um, Nepal is such a beautiful country in spite of that there are such great troubles in this category and that's why I enjoy current affairs classes so much, the way we seamlessly flip through topics. Canada, uh, they have planned to impose a tax on corporations providing digital services from 2022. That will stay in place until uh, major nations come up with a coordinated approach on taxation. Iska matlab kya hai? Uh, thoda hai. Basically, all these big tech companies, there's a category called big tech. I'll just write that down. Uh, big tech includes... Uh, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple. It might also to some extent include the likes of IBM, Cisco, Netflix, Zoom. So these players that are basically so dominant today. Uh, the funniest thing is a lot of the things that they earn, the currency they earn, it is actually through, um, shall we say, data. So data is not something which can instantly be mined, which can instantly be uh, exchanged for money. But somehow or the other, these companies become extremely powerful through the data that we use. And that is something several Western countries have now realized, including Canada, which is why Canada wants to do something. France, a couple of years back, uh, launched something which is called the GAFA tax. I'll mention it on the app. It's called the GAFA tax. GAFA standing for Google, Amazon. Facebook and Apple, you could also include Microsoft in that list, of course. Uh, meanwhile, the OECD has similar macro plans. Macro because it covers a vast region, a diverse region. OECD, kya hai? I'll talk about it. But why am I mentioning OECD is because that means that there's not one country. There are several countries. In fact, Australia is also waging a war against Facebook and Google on news data. What's happening is a lot of the news that... Uh, you know, gets published on Google, on Facebook. It is actually the hard work of news companies, of companies that have actually created the news. Uh, mm. But they don't get much. They don't get any credit. They don't get much money for it. So the entire thing is taken up by the platform providers who haven't themselves done the hard work. They just have a great algorithm and they reach the maximum people. So that advantage they are taking, that sort of market monopoly, especially these two companies, Australia, Canada, France, Italy. We've seen a, uh, several countries taking on these big tech companies. Uh, once USA gets into it, US has also done quite a bit. In fact, in quite a few states, uh, Facebook has been attacked in the US as well. Right. So that is something which is taking place, which is why I always say, don't give Google too much credit. Jab students mujhe kehte, Sir, Google mein aisa likha hai. That irritates me a lot because Google nahi bata ra. Google is simply the platform. Uh, Google mein there are very good websites. There are terrible websites. So you tell me what website mentions it. You tell me that this uh, data you found on Forbes.com, on Fortune, on Times of India's website, on the Economist.com, on The Hindu on whatever for that matter on a government website aap mujhe batao wo. don't say google bata rahe. google nahi batata kuch bhi. it's a library from where you search i'm personally very passionate about this that is why i spoke to you guys about this right okay let's continue then uh now let us understand what is the oecd oecd stands for the organization for economic cooperation and development oecd is often uh, referred to as a rich man's club you know all the members in this tend to be the developed rich countries so kya kya hai thoda sa dekh lete, lete hai. the headquarters are in paris which is in france 
very rich country of course founded in 1961 as the successor to the OEEC which had earlier been founded in 1948 as i said mainly includes developed countries or some which are developing but which are fast developing and which are near the developed ones in terms of the geographical location so you expect that in a couple of years they'll probably catch up at least to some extent the secretary general it's uh, mr jose angel guria who's from mexico which is not a developed country so uh, that's interesting the head is actually not from one of the old uh, rich boys's club video once again right so jose angel guria from mexico right let's move ahead okay now the public sector aerospace manufacturing company it's the hal they have delivered uh, the biggest cryogenic propellant tank some technical name aapko technical name yaad karne ki zarurat nahi hai ye isro ko deliver kiya hai ye kis liye important hai cryogenic propellant is something propellant kya hota something which propels so there is a have you ever thought of this there is a stationary vehicle stationary rocket on the earth and it has to be propelled so fast and so far up that it crosses the earth's atmosphere so it requires very powerful stuff and that is the cryogenic thing hal is the manufacturer isro is what will do the final launching so hal stands for hindustan aeronautics limited sarkari company as you can understand they develop various indian made uh, you know jets etc while isro is in charge of uh, the space research and space technology in india so indian space research organization yeah video has appeared now again thankfully right please take a look at this and then i'll move ahead i am giving you times to write it down it's always good to take your notes during the class right let's move ahead then i've given you ample time to write things down do keep taking notes acha so the union minister for petroleum and natural gas and steel shri dharmendra pradhan he is a bjp mp from odisha he has often been touted as a possible future chief minister in case bjp were to get power in or the state of odisha right now they are the main opposition to the biju janata dal so this group they launched india's first indigenously developed octane premium petrol uh using video conferencing method okay nowadays a lot of the inauguration takes place using uh the video conferencing method okay let's continue then okay now there is gitanjali rao she is a young indian uh she is also a she is a baker uh baker as in baking karti hai cakes wagaira uh she's a scientist young scientist and even an inventor named by the time magazine time magazine is one of the most prestigious general reading magazines worldwide so please do not mix time with forbes or fortune forbes fortune bloomberg business week these are all business publications time magazine or readers digest these are general reading which has all kinds of topics including business right so uh first ever kid of the year they have given this award for her work using technology to tackle issues ranging from contaminated drinking water to cyber bullying contaminated drinking water to cyber bullying 
so who is uh, yeah so so that's a kudos so time every year comes up with three award two awards this year a third has been added one is the person of the year another is person of the year but voted by the readers so pehla is person of the year voted by its own jury of experts another is voted for by the readers the third one is has been added now this is kid of the year this is for uh, under 18 people uh, for teenagers or even younger right meanwhile roshni nadar malhotra the na name nadar might remind you of shiv nadar so she is shiv nadar's daughter roshni nadar malhotra uh, from the hcl hcl is the company which uh, shiv nadar heads and so she topped the there's this index which is brought out each year the huron list and the one specifically for india is compiled in collaboration with the kotak group the kotak mahindra group so it's kotak wealth huron that's the full name for the indian version the global ones are simply called huron um, of india's wealthiest women so she's india's richest woman however because she's the daughter of uh, mr shiv nadar she is not first generation among first generation leaders it is ms kiran mazumdar shaw she heads biocon which is a pharma company um so she topped the ranking for the same award but under the self made category overall she is third or fourth there's ms savitri jindal who comes second and a few others but uh, among those who are self made she is number 1 manav that's a very good question that's because we need to study for the last 12 months before any exam theek hai so your exam will probably be in july or maybe i mean let's let's assume it will be july uh, we need to do for 12 months before that so i started with october i did november i am now doing december i will also do the purane mahine december to aap bahut aage ki baat kar rahe ho hum august aur september bhi karenge aur fir hum jan feb bhi karenge ठीक है मानव डज इट मेक सेंस इन फैक्ट वील ऑल्सो डू स्टैटिक जी के विच इंक्लूड्स हिस्ट्री जोग्राफी विच आर ओल्ड थिंग्स राइट मानव ऐसा नहीं कि एग्जाम में बस उसी महीने का क्वेश्चन आएगा पिछले बारह महीने का ट्रैक रखना इज अ गुड थिंग एस्पेशली लास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स ठीक है आई होप आई बीन एबल टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन मानव यस थैंक यू Okay, let's move ahead. Um, also, a lot of things that have happened does have an impact now. This is something we've already done in the month of November. So, Mr. Ranjit Singh Desale, he's from Pune. He teaches at the CDAC Center for Development of Advanced Computing. So, he has become the first ever teacher from India to win the Global Teacher Prize. A Kenyan national won this award last year. This year, an Indian has won, and it's worth a million dollars. So, I think he's donated most of his money. this is for innovations in teaching right now moving on from a teacher prize to politics uh, not exactly politics but a political personality a tall political leader he has uh, taken a stance on the farmer protest so i have you heard of him shri prakash singh badal so he has returned his padma vibhushan award now padma vibhushan is india's second highest award let me just write it down uh, padma vibhushan is india's second highest civilian honor theek hai the highest is bharat ratna uh, then we have the four padma awards padma vibhushan padma bhushan and padma shri so bharat ratna padma vibhushan padma bhushan and padma shri that's the order uh, so he has won the second highest but he has decided to return it in solidarity with the farmers protesting uh, i'm sure you guys are aware there were three farm laws we'll talk about those farm laws in detail some other time uh, and you also do there have been a lot of protests especially in punjab haryana western uttar pradesh and northern rajasthan they have also been in some other parts like in maharashtra and in some parts of mp but mainly it has oh, karnataka as well but mainly it has concentrated in this region he's a five times chief minister the first uh, two terms were not full terms 
but the next three they were full five year terms uh, so five time chief minister of punjab also the head and the founder of the shiromani akali dal the akali dal was for long a bjp ally in fact they were founders of the nda the national democratic alliance from 1997 till 2020 23 years they were allies uh, including 15 years they were in power in punjab and about 12 years in power in um uh, at the union at the center but they quit this alliance based on um the farm protests right i'll continue with it then punjab is one of those states which goes to the polls next year right now the congress is in power and in pretty strong uh, position in punjab right continuing further uh, there was one more event the called the hunar heart hunar heart ka uh, theme tha vocal for local uh so this was organized in rampur uttar pradesh rampur is in western up north western up and uh, another interesting thing about rampur is that uh, so rampur has been in the news for two reasons one is the fact that uh, apart from this uh, two more reasons the prime minister of india shri narendra modi recently spoke about indian dog breed the fact that a lot of us have been obsessed with foreign dog breeds like the labradors and uh, dalmatians and um, alsatians even huskies in the heat of india but a lot of these dogs they are not ideally suited to the indian climate which is why um, these indian dogs on the other hand there are lots of indian native dog breeds rampur uh, there's actually a rampur breed of dog which until these foreign dogs started arriving it was considered the most elite of indian dogs so rich people in india wanted to have the rampur dog in fact uh, a lot of british who settled in india during the colonial period they would make use of the rampur uh, you know um, dog breed the third reason apart from this and the dog one that rampur has been in the news one of the longest standing family disputes in india was recently settled by the supreme court it was running in court in some form or the other for six decades um, that was a family dispute regarding family wealth and property so that was recently uh, buried at least for the moment it might be reopened again so that is one thing it has been in the news for uh a rajya sabha member shri mukhtar abbas nakvi he is uh, the a union minister for minority affairs he was the one who his ministry organized this so he heads this ministry but organized by the ministry meanwhile moving on from rampur straight away to the us elon musk you've all heard of him he is the head of tesla and spacex so he is the head of tesla and spacex and he has topped the list by fortune for the business person of the year uh, 2020 maine aapko baat kari thi kuch time pehle about forbes magazine forbes and fortune are the two best known business magazines in fact i'll write it down on the chat window uh i'll just write it down forbes fortune and uh, bloomberg business week uh our best known business publications right so just take care of this so elon musk had also started paypal which he sold long back in fact he made a lot of money through paypal he has also started the uh, shall we say um he had started a project for hyperloop but i think right now it is in um, in cold storage it is not really working on the other hand richard branson has come up very strongly with the hyperloop concept but anyway he did get the business person of the year award now what to talk about fikki an organization which is seen a change in leadership now fikki hai kya main uska full form share karunga but uh, till then i also wanted to tell you that fikki is um shall we say it's a forum it's not a regulatory body it is an industry organized peer group now i'll give you an example let's talk about the automobile sector and in the automobile sector there are three companies all of them sell a 6 lakh rupee car i'm just giving you an example which is the tip of the iceberg but you'll get something out of this 
So there are three companies which sell a car worth 6 lakh rupees. 6 lakh category is typically considered the middle level. Now, 6 lakh ki gaadi hai, un tino mein se koi ek company decides to win the price war, artificially reducing its price. Agar wo apna input cost reduce karke, price reduce kar paata, to no problem. Lekin artificially kar raha hai, because usko bahar se paisa mil raha hai. Ab usne 6 lakh ka 4 lakh mein bechna start kar diya. And then everyone goes towards that 4 lakh rupee car. Then what happens is, the ones that were selling at 6 lakh because they do not have these artificial funds over a period of time they get slashed out of the market and after a few years that 4 lakh wali company it becomes a monopoly once you are a monopoly you can charge anything the customer has no right in that case to uh, go against you Okay, so in such situation, mein, companies kya kare? Uh, they can go to the regulator. There's a Competition Commission of India. But before going to the regulators or to the courts, you often try to resolve it amongst yourself. So even if you don't listen to... I mean, ultimately, you are bound to listen to peer pressure. So typically, what Fiki would do is, or CIA, or uh, sorry, CII, or ASOCHAM, or even NASCOM, although NASCOM is restricted to the tech space, what they will do is, they will get all the key players together. They'll also get some stakeholders from other fields like customers, suppliers, dealers, environmentalists, uh, the business community, foreign leaders, etc. And somehow, a uh, peer pressure situation could be created so that everyone works ethically all the members within that so this is one thing so fiki basically they cannot punish you if you do not do that but they can bring everyone together so all these industry forums they organize n number of industry forums each year in a lot of these five star hotels of course for the last year or so that has not been happening much but before that it was pretty common okay meanwhile shri uday shankar he is the new president elect for fiki uh, for this year, which is 2020-21, uh, he's the president of Walt Disney. Walt Disney, uh, the company, uh, which is based uh, this thing, and for the Asia Pacific region in particular. Just give me a moment, please. Thoda sa wo ink ka issue ho gaya. Pata nahi kyo. Because I actually prepared this PPT on a different laptop. वहां से यहां पे लाने में आई थिंक थोड़ा सा Uh, my apologies for this inconvenience, but uh, it just didn't not look good, so that's why I thought. So yes, he's the president of the Walt Disney Company. You've all heard of Disney, uh, a lot into cartoons, of course, historically, but now very big production house. In India, of course, Hotstar is also run by, it's a Disney plus Hotstar, as you know, right? So he succeeds Miss Sangeeta Reddy, who's from the Apollo group, was the previous head. They change leaders every two, maximum three years. Fikki ka full form dekh liche, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Thik hai, ye full form hai, zara copy kar liche full form, everyone. Fikki ka full form please copy kar lena, because is pe questions aa sakte hai. Right, so I hope you've copied this thing, so I'll move ahead to the next part. Okay, so yesterday were lots of students, I remember in the YouTube session, today somehow the uh, numbers have reduced once again, but it'll be great if you guys can, um, you know, 
participate a bit more right uh, okay so now moving on to the state of mizoram in the far northeast of india so mizoram's first solar power plant has been commissioned at tlungvel the name of the place is tlungvel um, manav if you have any other questions please feel free to ask right uh, manav right so it's the first solar power plant which has been commissioned at tlungvel and here pvc will be used matlab ki photovoltaic cells and it was inaugurated by one of the ministers of the state mr r lal zirliana uh, in mizoram it is the mnf which is in power mizo national front which is the constituent of the nda or the national democratic alliance uh, which is headed by the bjp at the center mizoram uh, had its elections in 2018 simultaneously with four other states and the mnf which is a local party uh, got a significant majority the congress Uh, is the second biggest it's the main opposition with around between 12 to 15 seats i don't remember the exact figure uh, congress had been in power before that for 5 years okay moving on to the state of bihar uh, bihar ne ek bahut hi interesting ek event kiya hai recently to ek bird festival organize kiya hai this is part of an initiative to save migratory birds so there are a lot of these birds which migrate every year uh to bihar from not just bihar but all of india from foreign countries especially during the winters because during winters it gets really cold in lot of countries like in siberia which is part of russia and mongolia parts of china and as far away as canada birds fly from all this while uh to take refuge in india because india is of course much warmer i know it's a very cold for us but for them it is better so they stay back now a lot of these migratory birds they have faced problems in the recent years due to pollution and human activities so that is why bihar has held a festival uh, to spread awareness about them and to eventually help them right so this event was organized by the bnhs and by the mandar nature club in bhagalpur bhagalpur is for the environmental front a very important city because bhagalpur has also got india's most important dolphin sanctuary there's a, a sanctuary for gangetic dolphins gangetic dolphin or the freshwater dolphin is india's national marine animal to uske liye bhi protection is aur jahan pe aapko dolphin protection there will be birds as well because this uh, the ganga river flows through this and it's protected in this region so you have a lot of birds as well which nest here what is the bnhs i am a big fan of the bnhs because i've been several times to bharatpur bird sanctuary to wahan pe bnhs has trained the staff and it does a great job bombay natural history society it's more natural history so it's one of the oldest uh, shall we say uh, environmental protection societies in the country now they're very big of course yeah um, i've been speaking about some great entrepreneurs like richard branson uh, or, and of course of elon musk but now talking about the world's richest man jeff bezos he has a space company called blue origin blue origin uh, wants to do space tourism you know in the near future uh, so he will take the first woman to the moon's surface um, as nasa nears a decision you know nasa will be building the first privately built lunar landers capable of sending astronauts to the moon by 2024 uh moon of course there have been a few missions in the past but they have all been government missions never by private this thing right so um, this time they are going to give a private contract to jeff bezos's company blue origin so that is where things will be truly significant right <coughs> i'll move ahead okay now indexes are very important on almost every month we do some index or the other so this time we have the global artificial intelligence index theek hai uh 
Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, no, no, no. This contract has not yet been given to SpaceX. SpaceX is building, uh, shall we say, these rockets. This actual uh, lunar landing, it is uh, given to Blue Origin. The NASA wants to distribute its uh, uh, stuff. Okay, Manav. Right. So, Manav, I don't know if you've attended my previous classes, but I've told you one thing, generally told the students, that every month we are going to do some indexes. Indexes ka matlab hai, koi na koi international body ne koi index dala hai. Manav, I think you know that after the IPM exam, IP mat ke baad, there is also a written ability test, an essay writing. So, us essay writing mein kya hai? You also have a large... Um, you you need to write. Also, in some colleges, you have group discussions. Although I don't think this year you'll have. If you're in class 12 right now and appearing for the exam this year, GD I don't think is uh, going to be a possibility. But generally speaking, if we have something of a GD or a VAT, what we can certainly assume for this year uh, is that um, whatever you write or you speak. It has to be based on facts and figures. So one of the very good way of arguing in a debate is to talk about global indexes. Indexes में आपको तीन चीज जानना है. पहला India का rank, दूसरा है rank one कौन है, और तीसरा है कि ये index publish किसने किया है. क्योंकि publish जो करेगा, if it's a reliable body, then it's important for us. ठीक है. So publish by the Tortoise Intelligence Index. And India is ranked 20th worldwide, which is actually very good. Most of the indexes, you'll see India is performing not so well. But here we've done extremely well. Right, rank one is USA, which is actually a surprise. Most of these indexes, if you notice, it is the small developed countries which tend to dominate over the uh, rankings. So that is, in this way, it is slightly different. Most of the indexes you will notice, the likes of Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark, New Zealand, they tend to top the rankings. Okay, continuing on uh, with more of the December current affairs. Now, this is very important because Pfizer became one of the first companies to land a contract in India. Uh, and before India, they got a contract elsewhere as well. So Pfizer became the first pharma firm uh, to seek from the DCGI emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in the country. Uh, the parent company, which is the international Pfizer, they already secured a contract in the UK and Bahrain. UK became the first country, Bahrain the second to uh, go for this. And in India, they did receive the emergency approval, but then they themselves withdrew because the conditions were a little tight. So please understand Pfizer's... Um, Vaccine is very different from the ones available in India. Pfizer's has had the best accuracy so far, efficiency level uh, higher than the one of AstraZeneca or Bharat Bio uh, Biotech. However, um, Pfizer is also expensive and it needs to be preserved in cold storage. Unlike the relatively more uh, robust, the other, which the other two are. Also with the other two, you have, um, I mean, they are being used widely now in India. So Pfizer's uh, is no longer much in availability in India, but available a lot worldwide. Many countries like United Kingdom, USA, Israel, UAE, several European countries have made use of the Pfizer uh, drug. So what is DCJ? It's actually the regulatory body in India for all the drugs which are prescribed. So koi bhi drug, if the doctor gives you, it has to be approved by the DCGI for approval in India, right? And I'm talking of um, uh, scientific medicines, maybe not traditional cures, right? So there is this Drugs Controller General of India. Just like in US, you have the FDA. I don't know if you have heard of this. Uh, Manav, have you heard of FDA? Can you tell me the full form? Uh, at this point, DCGI president, uh, the, the person who is the DCGI is Dr. Venu Gopal G. Somani. Venu Gopal G. Somani, please write down his name. Very important person at a time when we are in the midst of the pandemic.
वेरी गुड एक्सिलेंट अभिनय सो फूड यस मानव यू कैन लर्न फ्रॉम योर बैचमेट नाउ वेरी गुड अभिनय सो फूड एंड ड्रग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन अभिनय आई थिंक तुम कल मेरी क्लास में थे ऑगस्ट करंट अफेयर्स वो अब्रप्टली बंद हो गया ड्यू टू समेक इशूज सो आई कंडक्ट अ पार्ट बी ऑफ दैट सेम सेशन हार्डली टेन मिनट्स वो रिमेनिंग तो वो मैं टेन मिनट्स कर लूंगा ताकि वो टॉपिक आपका कंप्लीट हो जाए ठीक है अभिनय अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट टूडे एट वन ओ क्लॉक आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग टू ऑगस्ट करंट अफेयर सेकेंड पार्ट राइट सो डॉक्टर वेणुगोपाल सोमानी ही इज द प्रेजेंट डी सी जी आई ना मूविंग ऑन फर्दर विथ फाइजर लिटिल विथ डिटेल्स आई वॉन्टेड टू गिव इट्स एन अमेरिकन कंपनी बेस्ड इन न्यूयॉर्क सिटी विच इज इन द स्टेट ऑफ न्यूयॉर्क एंड प्लीज राइट द नेम ऑफ द सी ओ ऑफ द चेयरपर्सन ही इज फ्रॉम ग्रीस हिज नेम इज एल्बर्ट बोल्डा and the german pharmaceutical research company biontech is pfizer's partner which developed this thing so pfizer is the mass manufacturer there's a small german company biontech which is a research uh, firm mm, they they work in collaboration that's how typically it works pharma companies they tie up with research companies so it was biontech which actually developed this thing so kudos to that that's a german company based in the city of mainz if anybody watches football you might know there is a football club called sv minds yes abhinay yesterday we got a very good crowd on youtube not many on the app today is the opposite so anyway uh, good to have you guys do attend my sessions regularly are you both in class 12 uh, manav and abhinay i know there's a lot of tension which is ongoing for class 12 students these days uh, i do hope you remain calm under these stressful times Okay, let's talk about some Chinese scientists. Some these Chinese scientists, uh, they claim to have created the world's first light-based quantum computer. Uh, now this is an interesting move. This can be dangerous for a lot because it's so fast that it can even take on the supercomputer, the classical supercomputer. Every year we have competition, which is the fastest supercomputer. But now even that could be redundant thanks to this. Uh, so this can solve problems even faster. It's light-based quantum computer, not a supercomputer. It's named Jiu Zhang. Uh, just to share with you for your information, the world's fastest supercomputer is Fugaku. For the last 11 years, before 2020, the world's fastest supercomputer would either be from USA or China. But finally, Japan broke this 11-year duopoly, uh, decade-old duopoly, with her, with producing the fastest. That is called Fugaku. Please write down both these names. Jiu Zhang. I hope Manav and Abhinay, you are making your notes. Because notes नहीं बनाओगे तो बार-बार ये देखना पड़ेगा. वो फायदा नहीं होगा आपके लिए. साथ में notebook रखिए. Important bullet points इसको please लिख दीजिए. ठीक है, आई होप यू आर डूइंग दैट राइट राइट ठीक है आई होप यू गाइज आर टेकिंग द नोट्स ठीक है ये दोनों नाम लिख लीजिए जियो जंग इज फ्रॉम चाइना इट्स द इट्स लाइट बेस्ड क्वांटम कंप्यूटर फास्टर देन द फास्टेस्ट सुपर कंप्यूटर देयर इज आल्सो फुगाकू व्हिच इज द वर्ल्ड्स फास्टेस्ट सुपर कंप्यूटर देयर इज देयर इज आल्सो कपल ऑफ इंडियन सुपर कंप्यूटर्स एंड लेट मी राइट डाउन वन ऑफ देम इट्स परम सिद्धि परम सिद्धि इज इंडियाज फास्टेस्ट सुपर कंप्यूटर इंडियाज फास्टेस्ट सुपर कॉम्प डेवलप्ड by the cdac the same organization i was telling you about ranjit disale ranjit singh disale developed by cdac which is in uh, pune there was also pratyush developed by iit madras that also comes close but this one is overall the fastest theek hai i hope you've noted this down i'll move on to the next topic now moving from computers to the world of tourism and heritage wow i love this uh, so gwalior and orch have been to both these cities um, the monuments are beautiful gwalior of course famous for the palace and it has india's second longest fort that fort is overall has a perimeter of about 10 kilometers 
The one in Chittorgarh is 12 kilometers. So that's the longest. This is the second longest belonging to the Sindhya family. Uh, Orcha also in Madhya Pradesh. Both of them in northern Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Orcha is in the Bundelkhand region. Gawalia can also be considered Bundelkhand. It's sort of outer Bundelkhand. The Chambal region, you could say. Uh, so Orcha, uh, Orcha is famous for a riverine island. During the rains, uh, the, the area gets isolated and it's there's a Ram temple. There are two Ram temples. One of them is incomplete, but that it has been left incomplete due to a certain reason. Uh, you can all visit. Not now. We, it's it's not safe to visit. Go outside homes much. It's safe to sit at home and watch grade up videos. But I'm saying eventually when you do, it's near Jhansi, which is in Uttar Pradesh, of course, but next door is MP. So, Orcha, there's this uh, river island, island. There's also a palace in Orcha, which has been converted into a heritage hotel. If anybody wants to do heritage hotel, but you don't have that budget to pay 20, 30 thousand rupees for one night, this is a place. It's much cheaper. At least it was, uh, Patani, after the pandemic, how things shape up. Right? Uh, Manav and Abhinay, I'll just move ahead. Okay, let's talk about the UNESCO. Since you we mentioned UNESCO, this is my policy. Whenever some organization is spoken of, I tell you a few more details on on that body. So UNESCO is head is full form. Please note it down. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It was founded in 1945, which actually makes it one of the oldest UN bodies. Founded in 1945, the same year as the UN itself was created. So you can understand this was created right that year. Just like the Food and Agricultural Organization, which completed 75 years last year, UNESCO also did the same. Most of the others were created a few years later. We'll talk about the WHO as well today. Uh, the headquarters are in Paris, the capital of France, just like OECD. OECD is not a UN body. This is a UN body, but both headquartered in Paris. UNICEF के साथ कंफ्यूज मत होना वो चिल्ड्रंस एजुकेशन फंड है वो न्यूयॉर्क सिटी में हेडक्वार्टर्ड है अच्छा डायरेक्टर जनरल इज आल्सो फ्रॉम फ्रांस ऑल्दो दिस इज प्योरली अ कोइंसिडेंस शी वाज अर्लियर द कल्चर मिनिस्टर ऑफ फ्रांस हर नेम इज ऑड्रे अजुले राइट ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू देन टू डिसेंबर करंट अफेयर्स मोर ऑफ इट राइट नाउ आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so the who has appointed an indian origin person mr anil soni as the ceo of the who foundation so who is obviously an organization they also have a who foundation which is an ngo run by the who and uh, meanwhile unkta so i'll talk about the who later in detail but this is an indian receiving this award so a matter of prestige for us meanwhile uh, there's unktad they have declared invest india invest india was a campaign within india uh, to erase business performance and to raise investments. So, this is the award in 2020 ka UN Investment Promotion Award. Right. Now, there is a footballer from Manipur. She's a woman footballer, uh, Ngangum uh, Bala Devi. She's from Manipur. She plays for a Scottish club. This Scotland, this club in Scotland is called Glasgow Rangers or Rangers FC, uh, based in the city of Glasgow, which is a football mad city. It has one of the greatest footballing rivalries in the world, Rangers versus Celtic. So, what is this? Uh, this um, uh, in this club, they have a women's team as well. Glasgow Rangers is actually managed by Liverpool legend Steven Gerrard. He won Rangers their first league title in more than a decade. Celtic, their arch rivals were dominating the last decade. Uh, but their women's team has got this player. So she actually became the first to score in a European professional football league, becoming the first Indian woman to do so in the process. Right? You've gone quiet a bit. The two of you do keep uh, participating do keep chipping in. Okay, now let's talk about the UNCTAD. Since in the previous slide, I did mention both WTO and UNCTAD. So, dono ke mein I will spend some time. 
what is the UNCTAD? You can see the full form, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Uh, it was founded in the year 1964. The headquarters are in Geneva, which is in Switzerland. Uh, the Secretary General is the acting, she's the acting Secretary General because uh, the previous person stepped down and the official next person has not yet been uh, roped in. So there is a bit of time. So this was set up in 1964 to basically be an annual conference on trade and development to improve trading ties. At that time, remember, there was no WTO, there was no World Trade Organization. There was GAWT, General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which later on got replaced by the WTO. But that was not an organization. UNCTAD was a proper organization. Also, WTO does not fall under the UN. Uh, WTO also headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, same as UNCTAD. Um, yeah, so Secretary General, her name is Isabel Durant from Belgium. Belgium has French speaking people and it has got uh, Dutch speaking people. Yes, Pritam, good to have you here. Welcome to the session. Right, let's talk about the WHO then. Uh, the World Health Organization founded in 1948. Headquarters also in Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva is home to so many international organizations. Um, the director general is from Ethiopia. He has been a lot in the news. I don't want anybody to be going through uh, the COVID-19 crisis and not know him because obviously he has been uh, re uh, really at the forefront of this thing. Some of you may not, uh, may be critical of the work of the WHO, but nonetheless, that is a separate matter. He's a very important person right now, that is for sure. So Tedros Adhanom from Ethiopia, he's the director general of this organization. Right, let's continue with a bit more. So global cap market capitalization or the total value of all listed stocks in the world. Now, 2020 was a unique year. We saw global economic crash but we also saw the stock market doing very well. The stock market doesn't always, it goes a lot by emotion. It doesn't always go by what is rational and what are the actual figures. So it is not always indicative of the economy. Last year being a very good example. So the stocks uh, worldwide have actually crossed $100 trillion for the first time in human history. Um, thanks mainly to a tech driven rally in the US and in China. Now, talking about the WEF, uh, I'll speak about the WEF as well in some time. Uh, so they have announced, uh, it will. Uh, this is a very important topic. Your yes, second bullet point is, please. In fact, both these points are very important. Please, in Pestar, mark kijiye. Isko achche se likhiye, point number B. Right. So global market, uh, yeah, sorry, the WEF, uh, it has, it every year organizes and uh, organizes a conference in Davos, which is in Switzerland every year during the winters. But due to the certain COVID-19 conditions this year, they are changing that tact instead of the winters, they will have it in the summers. And instead of Davos, they will do it in Singapore. So that's one big change this year. Guys, please mark a star. Also, it will be a blended event uh, otherwise every year we have mass arrivals this year it will be blended with some people at the venue some um, going online Right, let's continue then. Let's understand what does the WEF really stand for. Uh, in fact, uh, the WEF does also give important awards and Indians have been known to win some of those awards in the recent past. Okay, let's continue then. Uh, it stands for the World Economic Forum and its founder is actually, he still remains the executive chairperson. His name is Mr. Klaus Schwab. 
He's from Germany. There's a Schwab Foundation, which was also established uh, based on his name. The headquarters are again in Geneva, but not exactly in Geneva. It's a small town on the outskirts of Geneva. It's called Cologne. Um, so Geneva is in the French speaking area of Switzerland. Switzerland has a German speaking area. 65% people approx the citizens are German speakers. Approx 25% are French speakers. They are in the south and southwest and around 10% are Italian speakers. So if you see the cities of Bern and Zurich or Basel, they are in the German side. Geneva and Lausanne on the French side. Logano is on the Italian side. Logano is a very famous skiing uh, resort. If I'm not wrong, they've organized the Winter Olympics in the past. So that is on the Dolomites near the Italian border. Right. Uh, it was founded in 1971. These are a couple of important facts about the World Economic Forum. They also do a lot of studies every year. So these studies can often be credible international body. This is one of those credible bodies which does a lot of these indexes. Right. Let's now talk about um, some more of the miscellaneous content. So the first person in the world to receive the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, she created record because obviously this is a very important one. She's a 91 year old woman, uh, Ma Miss Margaret Keenan, uh, and she received this in the city of Coventry, uh, which uh, it has a university hospital. There's a medical college, uh, which also doubles up as a hospital. Mostly medical colleges there are attached to real hospitals. That's what does the best training. So uh, it's in Coventry, which is in the... Mm, which is in the Midlands of the UK. Uh, some of you may have heard of the cities like Birmingham or Derby, Nottingham, Wolverhampton, Stoke. So all these cities are in the Midlands region, as is Coventry. Leicester as well in the Midlands. So don't confuse with Mid Midwest. Midwest is in the US. Midlands are in the UK. Okay, and the last topic for today or uh, for this class before I uh, wrap it up, it's about an uh, Indian uh, official. His name is Mr. Suyash Mehta. He is said to become the first ever Indian origin official to officiate in the NBA. I'm sure you've all heard of the NBA. It is the world's most prestigious basketball competition. Just like we have um, the NHL for ice hockey in the US, the NBA is for basketball. Right, Manav and uh, Abhinay, I cannot see your remarks anymore. Do let me know something. Pritam as well, you've been quiet since you joined. So do say something. It's great to participate. Right, so never has an Indian origin person officiated a game in mm, the NBA. So that is why this becomes significant. Right, so on that note, I'm done with today's class. Uh, I will just share with you some of the highlights on grade up. So this is our crash course, which is ongoing right now, uh, which includes these <coughs> trainers. So we've been running this for a while, but uh, you can obviously be part of this. For any course related queries, you may call us. I've already shared this number on every slide. I've shared this number at the bottom, 965-005-2904. But you also have another number, 931-95-99244. So you may call us at either of them and you'll get help from our counselors regarding the course, the curriculum, the teachers, the technology, etc. The payment criteria, of course. Grade up, our tagline is always the same. If it's live set. Hai. YouTube, mein please hamare, uh, channel ko subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon. Ko press ki jiye. And yes, thank you, Manav. And then you will receive notifications for all our uh, classes. Hai, we are also there on Telegram. Uh, so do uh, The link is there in the description. It's not in the description. Pe aap Just scroll down. And you will see the description. T click on show more. So fear you will certainly receive that. And of course, we are also there on the Google Play Store. Um, you know, we have topic wise quizzes. And of course, you can keep attending live classes on it. So just download the Grade Up app. Then you'll be able to receive all these benefits. So I'm done with the session. I have another session today at 1 p.m., which is for the month of August. So see you all for that class. I do not miss that class. August is also important, Manav. Because question 12 months before. 6 months more important, but 12 months also we can do. 
ठीक है सो अभी के लिए आई एम रैपिंग इट अप बट आई एम कीपिंग द सेशन ओपन फॉर अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स इन केस यू गाइज हैव एनी पेंडिंग क्वेश्चन इफ यू गाइज हैव एनी डाउट्स यू मे प्लीज आस्क Yes, Abhine. I will speak about this topic, but uh, this will take a bit of time. So I need to end this session in the next couple of minutes, as per uh, the schedule decided. So I'll talk about this in detail in the next one. But is there anything else you wish to ask? Anything on today's class or um, any overall strategies? Fair enough. If the, okay, thank you so much, Abhinay. Do keep attending. 1 p.m. I've got another class, so see you at that time. Uh, for now, I'm wrapping this up. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you very soon.